They're constantly surprising me with uh, the different behaviors they do. I get to see little cubs riding on mom's backs and um, bears mating and wrestling and chasing each other on the inner tidal. Um, it's pretty much always something new every day. My name is Joy Erlenbach. I'm a PhD student with Washington State University. My focus on the Changing Tides project is trying to understand how coastal bears are making a living. So what food resources and habitats are most important to them and how those things affect weight gain, which is the biggest currency for cub production and population success. Early season food resources can be really important to bears and when bears come out of the den in the spring, if other areas are still snow covered, then they might not have access to vegetation in those areas, whereas coastal areas and the intertidal specifically are more likely to be snow free. And so it might be a foraging area that is available when others are not. So we might suspect that bears are more likely to be clamming early in the spring and maybe not clamming in the fall, but we need to find out if that's true. And so I do observations throughout the whole summer, just distributed so that I get some of each part of the season. I do approximately eight hours of observations per day, looking at bears on the inner tidal and bears in the sedge meadows, and then also um, bears in the creek when salmon are available. I will glass an area with binoculars and a spotting scope looking for animals, counting each animal and any dependent young that it has. And then I'm also trying to sex the animals and to understand what behavior they're doing at the time of the scan, whether that's foraging or resting or things like that. Then I'm also collecting focal animal observations, which is focusing on one animal at a time and really watching that animal specific behavior. I'm interested in the foraging rates of bears in those different habitats. So how many clams per hour can a bear get and how much energy can they gain from that and how does that affect their body weight. And I will be doing the same thing with the sedges and the salmon, trying to understand how many they can eat, how important those foods are in their diet. I don't think that the observing that I do here hurts or disturbs the bears in any way. Our observations are non-invasive. I'm using a spotting scope and binoculars and I'm trying the best I can to not affect the bears natural behaviors and still gather the data I need. So in most cases I'm hundreds and hundreds of yards away from the bears and the, the visitors and guides are often much closer so I'm able to collect my data from distances large enough that it shouldn't affect them. One of the ways that we're tying human impacts to this project and to bears is if the presence of people is affecting the bears' ability to forage and how successful they are at foraging, then we might also be able to see that. And it goes as far as ocean acidification, which can cause decreases in clam populations, which could then affect the bears' ability to get adequate nutrients if the clams are an important part of their diet. It can also be affected by oil spills as well. So if there were to be an oil spill in this area, that could affect the clam populations, which could then affect the bears. Bears are really important to Katmai National Park and preserving ecosystems in general is important to the entire population. And so this is one way we're trying to get at kind of the interconnectedness of um, these different species and understand how one species can affect another. And if we can understand the importance of intertidal invertebrates in bear diets, we can try to preserve those for the success of the bear populations here.